Hello designers and welcome back to another Affinity Designer tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at the Contour tool. We're going to learn how to use it and how it might become useful when creating designs. Let's get to it. As we're talking about the Contour tool today, you should probably know where to find it. So for me, it's on the left hand side over there, Contour tool. If you don't see it here in your tools bar, head up, click on view, go down to customize tools, click on that. And you have a few options of tools here. There it is. You just click and drag it on to your tools bar and that's it. You can go ahead and close. What is the contour tool? Well, Affinity Designer puts it like this. The contour tool lets you offset the stroke of a curve or shape. The tool offsets the object's original outline. The stroke moves with the newly offset outline but its width remains unchanged. The object's outline can be moved inwardly or outwardly, more typically by dragging. Tool shortcut is key O. To get a better understanding of what the contour tool can do, I've created a few shapes that we're gonna use it on. Let's start with the green square here. I created this using the rectangle tool on the left-hand side. Okay, go up to the contour tool and click on that. Now that I've clicked on it, you can see in the context toolbar, there are now new options relating to this tool. We won't play with them just yet. Let's go ahead and see what this contour tool does on this shape. So click and drag in and you can see the square is now smaller, but the original outline is still here. So the tool offsets the object's original outline that's worked. It also says the stroke moves with the newly offset outline, but its width remains unchanged. So let's stick a stroke on here. So I'll go up to the stroke and I'll click on it and I'll just add a nice thick one there. Okay, I'll go down and I'll click and drag it out. It says the width remains the same and that is working. Now that I drag it out like this, I'll let it go. You can see that as I've scaled it up, the corners are not sharp anymore. So how you'd play around with this is go up here. It says contour type. The first one is round joins and that's what's selected already. Second one is mitre joins. If I click that, it now shows that there are sharper joins here. And the last one is bevel joins. If I click on that, you can see they now have beveled edges. And notice when I'm moving it up and down like this, there's a radius that moves around. So if I click on that, I can just scrub left and right on here and it will change the size of it. But I like to just do it like this. Okay, the next things are caps. We won't need to worry about that with this shape. And it says fill. So the first one that is selected is auto closed because this shape is closed. There's nothing in the middle. If we click on the next one, this looks like a donut, force open, click on that and it's created a hole there. And the next one is force closed. But we'll just go back to this one, the force open one. I'll just press V, the move tool, and drag it over. You can see that it is a hole and now you can see through it to whatever's behind. Clicking on the contour tool again. The last one, it says bake appearance. So if I wanted to keep what I've created here and play around with the nodes, I can do that. So if I just click on the node tool right now, you can see there are no nodes for me to play around with. So back on the contour tool, if I click bake appearance, you can see something's changed. I press the node tool now, I just press A. Now you can see all the nodes are here and we can further manipulate this shape. Moving on to the circle, I'll select that and I'll go up to the contour tool again, click on it. Let's drag it in and out like we did before. We can click on the different fill types, so we'll force it open. And now we've got a ring. If I bring it in a little bit more, it looks more like a donut. And we can bake that appearance as well. Moving over to the next one, this, if I select it, this is just a stroke. And you can create this using the pen tool up here. So if I just click somewhere like that, that's a stroke. And if I use the node tool, I can bend it and move it around like so. But just deleting that and going back onto the contour tool, I'll select this, this is just a line right now. If I click and drag outwards, you see it kind of opens up to some kind of shape, almost as like a square. So I'll just leave it like that for now. And now that it's a shape, I could probably add a fill to it. So if I head up here to fill, and I'll just add some kind of color in there, you can see I can now add the fill. That was just a stroke before, so that's pretty cool. But let's check out some of the other things we can do here. So let's look at cap. So right now it's on no cap. If I click on round cap, looks like a long pill now. And if I click on the last one, which is square cap, it just kind of pushes it out a little bit more. 
Okay, heading on over to fill. It's on the uh, force close auto closed right now. Click on force open. Nothing really happens because it it is still technically a stroke because you can see the line here. And on the next one, force closed. This happens. Okay, going back to uh, auto closed. We'll leave it at that. And from this point forward, let's say drag it out to here and let's click on one of these. I'll press bake appearance and there we go. We have a new shape that was just from one line. If I click on the node tool, you see there's nodes here. You can play around with it a little bit more. And moving on to the last one, I'll select this again, contour tool, and I'll just drag it out like that. See, it gets a little bit more interesting with the bend like that. And now we can have a look at these contour types. So right now it's on the rounded edge. If I click on that, now it gives it slightly sharper corners and bevel, it's beveled the edge there. Now you can play around with cap as well. It's going to create all kinds of shapes. You can get really experimental with this one. And again, fill type's not really going to work. We click on this one here, which is force closed, and you can see what's happened there. You can play around with that a little bit more. See, it's kind of odd, isn't it? Anyway, I'll just bake that, bake appearance. We've got a triangle. This is probably the boring part of it, but it's good to understand the foundations and what this tool is actually doing when you press all of these buttons. All right, moving on to the next one. Okay, now I'm starting off with a donut shape. So over here, you can see the donut tool. I've used that to create this, and you know you can play around with these little nodes and mess around with the size of it. So let's use the contour tool on this one. So head on up, select it, and drag in. And that's what it's doing on default. Drag it in and out like that. What's gonna happen if we click on this one here? Force open. If I click on that, you can see this is what's happened. So it could be a cool shortcut to create shapes like this, I guess. And if I go force closed, it forces it closed again like a normal donut. So let's just check on force open and create like that and bake appearance. And there we go. Moving on to the next one. Okay, this is where things start getting a lot more interesting. So I have two shapes here. What I'm gonna do is create a compound shape. So I'm gonna select this one, hold down shift, select the other one. You can see them both in the layers panel there. And I'm gonna go up to layer and create compound. The other way of doing this is also to head up here to geometry tools where it says add, keep your finger on alt and click that. So I'll do that now. So I'll click it and now you can see in the layers panel it says compound. Now we're gonna go ahead and use the contour tool. So I'm gonna click on it, I'm gonna drag it in like this. Okay, now I'm gonna press on the move tool, which is V, and I'm gonna double tap so I've selected one of them. You can see down there in the layers panel I've selected this one. And watch what happens here. So I'm gonna bring it closer. Actually, let me just take off snapping. So I'm gonna bring it in closer and look at that. They almost kind of magnetize towards each other, if that's the correct word for it. Really cool. And with this, you can still resize each shape individually, and that's that's pretty cool. So using some of the options in the contour tool, let's go ahead and click on force open. So if I click on that, you can't really see anything's happened right now. But if I just play around with it a little bit more, you can see these kind of things start happening. So if I press the move tool, V again, you can start moving this around. So we kind of got a donut here. So the opportunities to experiment using this tool are endless. But I'll just press Command Z to go back a few steps. And you can see we have something like this. And you don't have to just put up with two, you can also copy this. So if I just copy this shape, Command J to copy it, you can see it's there in the layers panel. I drag another one out and you can add as many as you want. Get super creative. I think somebody called it Meta Balls on another uh, YouTube video that I saw. So yeah, you can kind of just play to your heart's content with all of this. All right, let me go back a little bit more. I created a little something earlier with this just because I thought it looked like a set of binoculars. So that's something that I created with it. So when it's like this, I just click on um, contour tool and bake appearance. And then from there, I could just start adding in different shapes and playing around with it. And then I ended up with something like that. Let's use it on this last shape here. So I'm gonna select all of them again. And I'm going to head on up to layer, 
and create compound. I'll do it that way this time. And you can see it's now in a compound shape. I'll grab our contour tool and click and drag inwards. And that's a pretty cool shape. And you can go the other way too. And you can play around with all of these options again. And just like before as well, I can press the move tool, tap on one of them and play around a little bit more. So you end up with something like this. Moving on to the next one. So here is a photo I took of the Trevi fountain in Rome. And I was thinking of how I could use the contour tool to kind of present the photo in a cool way. So I came up with the idea that I could just create a, a circle like this and copy it a few times. So I'll just press command J, drag it out and command J again. And I'll just select all of them. So just holding my finger on shift and select each of them and head up to layer, create compound. And again, we go on the contour tool, click it and drag them in like that. And now I'll press the V, the move tool and just let them do their thing. And I'll make them a little bit bigger as well. Maybe something like that. And I just offer it up. So we've got three statues here. So to see behind this, I'm just going to bring down the opacity slightly. So I'll click on compound in the layers panel. And I'll just drag down slightly like that so we can see what's behind. So say for the center character, I could make it a little bit bigger maybe. And for this one over here, make that a little bit bigger too. And this one slightly bigger as well. And maybe bring it down a bit. And this one out and down a bit like that. I'll just bring up the opacity again. And we have our in the layers, you can see compound is there and our photo is there. But before I do anything, I'm just gonna go ahead and bake appearance. So I'm back on the contour tool, I bake appearance. Now I'm gonna grab the picture, I'm gonna click up and to the right to clip it inside of this shape. This looks kind of cool. I could probably put some uh, text underneath. I won't do it now, of course. But I can also move it if I didn't get it quite right. And it's just kind of a nice way to present photos. Obviously you can choose whatever shape you want, but it's just a, an idea that I thought might be kind of cool. So in this experiment with the contour tool, I have four strokes here, each one of them drawn out with a pen tool. If I select all of them, grab the contour tool and click and drag out like that. Now I've created some kind of shape. I will add a fill to it. So I'll just add green. And you can kind of see it looks like a stack of papers upside down. So I could just go up to transform here and flip vertical. And I kind of like that, but this is slightly off. So I could just click bake appearance. And if I click on A, the node tool, I could just select all of those corner ones there and drag it in. And if we look out, it kind of looks like a stack of green papers. Maybe it's cash. But also remember I showed you that we could create holes and force the shape open. So we can go ahead and do that as well. So select all the shapes again, head on over to the contour tool and we can click on force open. You can't see anything that's happened yet, but if you click and drag in, you can see the changes start to take effect. Drag it in a little bit more and we can play around with the contour type so we can make it sharper there. I remember if you think, oh, you want that a little bit sharper, remember there is a stroke on here. So you can head on over to stroke and you can go to join here and click on that and you see it's made it sharper in the edge there. Or we can make it beveled as well. So knowing the basics of how the contour tool works, it can help with your experimentation, knowing that we can create a hole in there, etc. Moving on to the next one. Getting even more experimental in this example, I've got a bunch of strokes again overlaid over each other. And what I'm going to do is select all of them. Command A. I'm using a Mac, by the way. And I'm going to select the contour tool and zoom out. OK, I'm just going to click and drag out. And you can see we're presented with this really cool pattern. Looks like an X with the corners turned. And now that we've dragged it out, we know that we can add a fill to it. So I'll click on the fill and add some kind of purple color. And it looks like now that we've got a stack of rectangles and we can go ahead and click on the different caps, round cap, square cap. But if I take the fill off, you can see what we're presented with. So bring it down. That's a cool pattern. Go back down to round cap. It's more of a spiral and back to where we were before. Now just press back a few more times. 
to get it back to where we had it before. And what I can do from this point, I can click on bake appearance so I can bake the appearance. And now they're, they're all strokes still, so I can expand the stroke. So I'm going to go ahead and go to layer and expand stroke. So now they're all strokes. And what I'm going to do is go up to geometry and click add. And that's added them all together. Now I can just add a color to this. So I'm going to grab the fill tool which is G and just drag down. I'll choose some colors, see if we can make it pop. I'll choose on that side, I'll choose some kind of pink and this side I'll choose a kind of blue color. And I'll just press V so we can see that properly. So all of that came from a number of strokes. Uh, so it's really cool to experiment as much as you can with this tool. So one of the things I use the contour tool on the most is text. So in this example, I'm going to type something out. And I'm going to use the contour tool on this. So I'm just going to switch to the move tool and I'm going to copy this. So I'm going to press command J, which creates a duplicate and you can see it made here in the layers panel. So I'm going to select the one underneath and I'm just going to change the color of this to maybe like a darker purple here. And now I'm going to grab the contour tool, I'm going to click it, I'm going to drag it out like that. So we've got a nice outline here and I can go ahead and do that again. So I'm just going to go over and click on command J again, and I'm going to choose the bottom layer. I'm going to use the contour tool once more to drag it out and I'll choose a white for this one. So if I zoom in, I'll just make it a little bit smaller, a little bit thinner, that outline. And I'll click on the move tool. And there it is. Very simple, very easy to use, but really great results. And to finish it off, I like to select all of them. And I like to press convert to curves. So it's no longer text. They're just shapes again now. Or if I just press command Z to go back again, I can go on the contour tool, click on that, or press bake appearance. And the same results happen. They're all shapes again. Hell yeah. In this example, we're going to recreate the command symbol, which you can find on a Mac keyboard. So we're going to go from five squares like this. We're going to round off the corners using the corner tool, and we're going to end up with something like this by using the contour tool. So up here, I have my five squares. You can see in the layers panel, I'm going to select all of them. And now I'm going to click on the node tool here. And we're going to select all of these nodes that are on the outside. So what I'm going to do is click on Alt on the keyboard. And I'm going to click and drag so I can draw out a, an outline to select nodes. So what we're going to do, go around like that. And we're going to create a donut style shape like that. And you can see now if I zoom in, all of the outside nodes are selected and not these inside ones. So now that they're all selected, We'll head on over to the corner tool, click on that. We'll select one of the nodes and click and drag it in until it turns into a round circle like that. Now that that's done, I'll just click on bake appearance up here in the context toolbar. Click on that. And now I'm going to select them all again. So they're all selected. Just click on the move tool so you can see it's all selected. Now we're going to move to the contour tool. I'm going to click on that. And you can see if we bring it out and in, we get these kind of shapes. So I'll just press back so we're back to normal. Okay, now we're gonna click on the fill, force open. I'm gonna go down and just click and drag a little bit and you can see the outline coming. And now that's done, we'll click on bake appearance. You see all of the layers here, we'll click it. And if we want to, make sure this stays this shape so that we can't move different bits around like this. If I just move it, we don't want it moving around like that. So we'll just select them all and click on add. And now they're all just one shape and you've got your command symbol. So in the last example, we have a monitor, but it doesn't quite have a screen yet. So what we could do is grab the original rectangle we've got here, press command J to duplicate that make it black and drag in by holding command and shift, drag in like that, but you can see it's not equal these sides. 
you could then click and drag these outwards a little bit and try and get it right by eye or you could play around with the dimensions in the transform panel basically there are a few steps to do it but if we just delete this screen using the contour tool will make it way quicker so we're going to duplicate that layer make it black head on over to the contour tool click and drag inwards like that and now we have equal distance around the bezels and I'll just press bake appearance and it's done and we can even add what we're doing into it and now we have our monitor with equal bezels and it looks cool thanks a lot for watching I hope you found that tutorial useful if you did leave me a comment click like and subscribe if you haven't already until then I'll see you on the next one cheers